Thanks for coming out, everyone. Coach Johnson is uh, going to introduce his uh, returning class. We'll start with just kind of an opening statement, and then we'll uh, open it up for questions. Uh, first off, thank you guys for coming here. It's uh, awesome to see this type of response when you look at a baseball recruiting class. I think it shows how special it is to play at a place like Arizona that people care about it and, and come out and support it. This is always one of my favorite days of the year for a couple reasons. Number one, uh, the young men that we're going to sign and bring into our program have been working for a long time. And it's a uh, dream of theirs to, to sign at a place like Arizona. And so it's a great accomplishment uh, for them. Uh, what gets me more excited than that is uh, the opportunity that they have to come to a program like this and that we get a chance to be a part of the next phase of their journey of moving towards professional baseball through the University of Arizona and the things that we can do from preparing them uh, to get them ready for that, uh, they're in for uh, a great experience. Uh, also, when you look at the team dynamic, uh, having a little bit better understanding of where we are, what we need, the demands of the Pac-12, who we recruit against, I feel like this group will complement the players in the program extremely well to help us um, you know, keep pushing forward in a very, very competitive environment. Um, this day doesn't happen like this one did without the help of a lot of people. And I just want to take a second to, to recognize them. Uh, our athletic director, Greg Byrne, um, not only does he do everything he can from a resources standpoint to make our program uh, you know, an elite program or the chance to be one in terms of the resources that he and the department put into it, but takes time and meets with our recruits. Several of these players have met with him and uh, does a great job in showing the importance of baseball at Arizona to them. Uh, we have a, a, an A team, as I call it, of uh, Jim Crumpos, our strength coach. One of the things that they'll get from a development standpoint is they will, uh, bodies will change once they get to Arizona. And if you go to a Major League Baseball game nowadays, there is nobody that is not physical. And uh, he does a great job with meeting with them. Uh, the academic support staff, John Mosbach, Jennifer Muse, uh, do a great job of laying out all the resources uh, academically that these players have when they come to Arizona. And then uh, Becky Bell and uh, Step in the uh, life skills program do a lot of the same type of thing. So. When you put together a, a tradition, a program like we have, and then all the resources that these players will come in contact with when they come to Arizona, it's a very attractive setup and allows us to uh, have success in recruiting, which is the only way uh, you're going to survive at the level of college baseball that we play. Um, before I get into each of them individually, just some, some thoughts on the group as a whole. I believe there are a few things that stand out. Uh, one of the things that we have to try to do here is project are the best years of baseball in front of the talent that we see so it becomes usable skill uh, in high-level competition. I think we accomplished that with this group. Uh, something that I'm always drawn to are high-level performers. You know, I want guys that are you know, the pitcher of the year in their league or the state player of the year because it shows uh, successful playing experience. I think we did a nice job with that, um, especially on the pitching side of it. And this was a key year for us in terms of recruiting pitching. And on the position player side, I think it's a great blend of baseball ready skill and athleticism, which you need to be able to play in the Pac-12 and at our particular field and, and facility. So I think we accomplished those things with, with this group, which I'm very uh, excited about. Uh, lastly, is it's a process to build a good team. When you talk about having experience, infusing it with new talent, doing it in a way where the roster is constructed in terms of how many guys you can have on scholarship, what scholarship they can be on, and then and putting it into a 35-man team, uh, that's a challenge. And, and I believe this group adds into all those things and, and pushing us forward. Um, what I'll do is I'll go through uh, the high school recruits that we have first, and then the transfer recruits at the end. Uh, it's a good blend. Uh, bringing in 14 new players to the program. 
go in alphabetical order with the high school guys. The first one is Jacob Blass, a shortstop from San Marcos High School out of the San Diego area, a player I've been familiar with for a long time, uh, is an elite level infielder uh, in the class of 2017. Tremendous defensive skill in terms of hands, uh, arm strength, and uh, a great athlete. He's an elite runner uh, with a sneaky pop in his bat. And I think as he develops into uh, a stronger, more physical uh, college player, I think it's somebody you're going to hear a lot about in our program. And uh, we're very excited to have Jacob. Uh, the next one is Quinn Flanagan from Corona del Sol High School up in the Phoenix area. Uh, Quinn, when we got here, was uh, quickly regarded as one of the best pitchers in the state of Arizona for the class of 2017. Um, I'm very proud of him. Uh, he had an uh, injury last year that took away his high school season, but the, the way he has rehabbed, uh, the toughness that he has shown me, um, the uh, fortitude to push through that and to get himself ready to go for the 2018 season for us at Arizona is something that uh, takes character uh, to do that. He's exemplified that, and the best part about it is we already saw the, the pitching skill. And when you talk about uh, a big-bodied guy with great velocity, downhill angle on the fastball, usable off-speed stuff, I think it's a guy that you have a chance to hear a lot about and so to keep a pitcher of that caliber uh, in state and at the U of A is, is a big deal for us. Uh, Josh Haley, left-handed pitcher from Gar High School in Southern California, big time winner, won 10 games, I believe, or maybe even more than that um, last year in his high school season uh, for one of the best high school programs in Southern California. If I was to give you a comp, I think he reminds me a lot of J.C. Cloney, who had a lot of success for us last year in terms of three pitches, great fastball command, curveball, uh, plus changeup, and uh, all of those attributes, I think, give him a chance to be successful pitching in this league against the competition that we play, and particularly in our field. Um, Gil Luna from Casa Grande High School, right up the road, uh, left-handed pitcher with an electric arm up to 91 miles an hour. I mentioned the performance thing being uh, a key component of what we look at when we evaluate these guys. I don't know that there was a high school pitcher in the state of Arizona that had a season like he did last year in terms of the amount of strikeouts with innings. Um, he's extremely competitive and uh, a great, great fit for us and somebody that I think you will see uh, a lot of in key roles in, in big situations during his time here. Uh, stretching out a little bit, uh, J.J. Montenegro from Dallas Jesuit High School in Texas. Um, we are very fortunate with this one. Um, one of the travel teams in the Phoenix area, uh, T-Rex, reached out to him and got him to come play on their team this summer. And so we got a chance to evaluate him two or three times. And uh, to give you a little context of it, every time we watched him pitch, the game was over in like an hour and a half. I mean, it strikes. Low strikes, in and out, change in speeds, and uh, performing at a high level. And uh, it's very tough to get into uh, the Dallas or Houston metro area and, and, and get a player away from all of the programs that are in there. But because of some circumstances, we uh, lucked out with JJ, and we're very excited about that. Uh, Blake Paw from Chaparral High School up in Scottsdale, outfielder, uh, very physical, strong, bat speed, uh, chance to hit with some power, hit the ball with authority. Um, a couple things about Blake that have stood out to me is he has improved tremendously from the time that he committed to us. And I like to see that upward trend in a player's development. And he had a, had a great summer this summer, particularly at the area code games in Long Beach, which is one of the biggest events of the summer in terms of high school juniors, seniors to be. Uh, the pitching in that event is so quality. I've seen a lot of good hitters over the last 11 or 12 years that ended up being great college players struggle in that event. And, and Blake hit the ball with authority on a regular basis. And uh, we're happy to have him here. Again, stretching out to Oklahoma, Roman fan soccer from Heritage Hall High School in Edmond, Oklahoma. Much like with JJ, we were fortunate. Um, CBA, a, a travel team out of California, and a friend of mine, John Pano, 
um, brought Roman in to, to pitch for them. And Coach Brown was allowed to, uh, to see him. And we jumped on him very quickly. Uh, the ability to miss bats and, and create swings and misses uh, is extremely important uh, with the level of competition that we see. Uh, I think the thing that stands out to me with Roman are two things. He's an athlete uh, with a, a very uh, effortless delivery, but he has an 83 mile an hour slider um, that I've seen him strike out more guys than I have give up hits or walks, and that's usually a good uh, ratio. So once he gets to Tucson, it'll be great if he can keep that keep that going. Um, you know, probably if you were looking for a, a headliner in this class or somebody that I'm excited about, maybe the most, uh, Matt Sauer, right-handed pitcher from Ernest Rigetti High School in Santa Maria, California. When we first got the job, it became evident to me that uh, the competition level of recruiting in the Pac-12 is, there's not too many more uh, competitive venues like that. And you better be able to uh, step up and, and get, you know, elite type pitching, like some of the guys that I've mentioned. And I think Matt really fits the bill on that. Um, it's easy to see, he's 6'4", uh, maybe 6'5", uh, tremendous arm strength, big time slider. I think the separator is, and we talked about this last year with our run and our team, the guys that pitch at the front end of the rotation or at the end of the game in the most important innings have to have special character, competitiveness, and makeup. And I think that's what seals the deal uh, for me with Matt the most. And uh, could not be more excited to have him at Arizona. Uh, Tate Soderstrom, a left-handed hitting first baseman and outfielder from Turlock High School in Turlock, California, uh, fits in extremely well uh, to our style of play. Uh, he's, he can hit. He's extremely balanced, uh, great bat speed, left-handed swing. You all know my um, affinity for left-handed hitters. I think his athleticism combined with the power uh, make him a perfect fit and component for us. And I think as he continues to get experience and at bats, um, he will be someone that will impact our lineup uh, a lot over the next few seasons. Jonathan Stroman, right-handed pitcher from La Cueva High School in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, a lot to say about his ability. He's up to 93 miles an hour, wipeout slider, uh, athleticism off the charts, competitiveness, every pitch is a strike and uh, a guy that has unlimited potential. Uh, last high school player, uh, Dante Williams, uh, left-handed hitting outfielder uh, from Legacy High School in Las Vegas, Nevada, an area that's been good to me and, and good to us since uh, we've been here in terms of finding players. I've been familiar with Dante for a long time. Um, you know, he fits that athletic, can really run um, you know, handle the bat. And something I've always appreciated about him is the teams that he plays on always win. And in the, the key points of games, um, he always seems to be in the middle of causing a disruption with a good at bat or on the bases and, and will fit well into uh, what we do and, and how we play. Um, we were very successful last year uh, with recruiting transfers. This year is no different. I think it's an important component to us here at, at Arizona. And I feel like we have three really, really high impact guys that we went out and were able to get. It was nice this year to have a little bit better idea of the foundation of the program, uh, getting some really good freshmen on campus this fall that we're really excited about, allowed us to be a little more deliberate in, in recruiting the transfer market, if you will. Uh, the first one is catcher Michael Benson from Palomar College in Southern California. Uh, was drafted by the Colorado Rockies out of high school. Tremendous defensive catcher, great throwing arm, uh, great receiving, blocking skills, and plays at a great program at, at Palomar and has really developed as an offensive uh, player. So we're excited about Michael. Travis Minot, uh, infielder from Orange Coast College in uh, Southern California as well. Uh, we, he just committed to us uh, about a week ago. And uh, we're very familiar with Travis, who was starting uh, shortstop at Oregon last year. Uh, Left-handed hitter, athletic, can run, 
unlimited potential. And again, somebody I've been familiar with through the recruiting scene for a long time, uh, played for Team USA this summer, the collegiate national team, in a brief stint, and has unlimited ability. And when you look at the guys that we have on the roster right now, uh, the guys that we're bringing in, uh, the dynamic of what he can do offensively and defensively fits in extremely well. And any time you get a player with, with Pac-12 experience, Team USA experience, uh, that's a real positive. So we're excited about Travis. Avery Weems, left-handed pitcher from Yavapai College here in Arizona. Um, very good arm, you know, up to 88, 89 miles an hour, a big time uh, swing and miss curveball. Try to never walk away from a left-hander with a, a really good breaking ball. Um, I'm really excited about Avery's uh, progression. Uh, he committed to us last year uh, around this time in the fall and has stuck with that. And uh, I'm excited about the immediate contribution he can make to the pitching staff next year in terms of experience. Uh, he's developing a changeup, and he's a guy that I think the sky is the limit for when you look at his work ethic, how he approaches what he does, and then now you add a pitching coach like Dave Lawn into working with Avery. Um, I think he will only continue to get better. And I saved that for the end. Um, the most important people uh, to thank in, in this uh, process is our coaching staff. Uh, Sergio Brown, our recruiting coordinator, hired him for a reason. And uh, you know one of the reasons was to help put together a class like this that we feel great about on a year-in, year-out basis. I think he's really good at two things. I think he's spectacular at evaluating. And it, it's hard. There's a lot of good players across the United States. And which ones fit into our program? You have to make tough decisions. I think Sergio's great at that. And he's the best that I've ever seen as far as uh, initial findings and helping us uh, build a list that we can narrow it down to going after a group of players like this. And then when you look at the caliber of the pitchers that um, you know are in this particular class, Dave Lawn, uh, tremendous track record, obviously, and doesn't really need to go further than what he did with the staff that we had last year. Uh, pitchers should want to come to Arizona and, and pitch for Coach Lawn. And then the rest of our staff, uh, Jimmy Van Ostrand, Ray McIntyre, Mark Wanaka, Michael Bradshaw, um, you know, helping coordinate in this whole thing is, is a challenge. And, and uh, I'm lucky to have those guys to uh, help put this thing together. So it's a good day. Now we've got to, you know, get to the next phase of this thing and uh, help these guys continue to improve and, and get ready to make an impact. Jacob Blass. Well, it's it's interesting. He is a, uh, a San Diego County guy, and and we had Kevin Newman here before I was here, the coach here. Uh, I think defensively and athletically, um, that is a, a very good uh, comparison. I think um, the way he runs and the things he can do as far as handling the bat. Um, he may not be the physical offensive player that Kevin evolved into as a college sophomore and junior yet. But that's why he's coming to Arizona, you know, to, to close the gap. I think something that stood out with him is we were in, we were playing in a regional final in Louisiana, and I had two Division One coaches that I respect tremendously, texted me and said, "Hey, man, this is the best player on the field and some really high level games going on." And so, uh, he's an impact guy in this deal for sure. When did you start bringing this class together? <laughs> uh, I don't remember the date exactly, but whatever day that we got hired and were brought to Arizona. I'm, college baseball recruiting is different. You, I'd love to build our team a year at a time. And there's an element in doing what we do, which I have to kind of control that. But if you wait, you're going to get smoked because everybody that we compete against is really on these guys in eighth grade and their freshman year of high school. So in that sense, we were still already a little bit behind for this class. but. Uh, the efforts of Coach Brown and Coach Lawn and our staff, it was, uh, it was go time right when the bell rang. How much did uh, Orange Coast Coach Donald Belli help with that? He's got experience in Cape League and everything. Yeah. Everything yeah, John Altabelli is one of the best junior college coaches in the country, and I've known him for a long time. And 
I mean, all the way back to my days at Point Loma, he was always great about putting guys in front of you. This one was a unique one. It was probably not till the end of September, middle of September, uh, Cody Deason, uh, pitcher on our team, and Travis were childhood best buds, and I hadn't even known that he had, you know, transferred out of Oregon and said, hey, coach, you know, Travis is not at Oregon anymore, and, you know, would you be interested in talking to him? So we got to give a tip of the cap assist to Cody Deason for getting the ball rolling on that one. How much, uh, if at all, do you feel like the run to the finals last year helped in this period of time? Can you, can you quantify it in any way? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, I think it helped in a number of ways. I think the most important way that it helped was for our freshmen that are on the team right now, or, or recruits from last year, where six of those guys were drafted and in the midst of making a decision, do they sign a pro contract or do they come to Arizona? And so they got on full display for, I believe we played 15 postseason games, um, that they, that was in front of their face the whole time. So I think that's probably the area that it helped the most. In this class, it helped us with a lot of guys. Uh, we closed, you know, if you will, pretty strong over the last month or so. And we had players refer. To that, I think you'll see even a bigger impact next year in, in terms of the 2018 class based on how um, the dynamic of, of recruiting goes. But yeah, all that is positive, and hopefully we'll continue to use that. Um, when you go, when you, when you arrive at this day today, in your mind, are you thinking, I'm only going to have a certain percentage that these guys come because they're, you know, you're obviously you're recruiting talented guys Yeah, no doubt. Um, no, no, I, I don't think so. I think I've kind of evolved in my coaching career of it's very easy to jump to, you know, the guy that throws the hardest or has that ridiculous power, or hits a ball off the wall every time in a game. Well, if I'm seeing that, so are the Arizona Diamondbacks and the San Francisco Giants and the New York Yankees. So I think what we've done with this group in particular is you have to recruit the person and you have to recruit the family. And these guys and their families are very committed to the college path towards Major League Baseball. And I think the important thing for them and really any high school recruit in the country to understand is you're not choosing pro baseball over college baseball. You're using college baseball as your path to pro baseball. And essentially what they're doing is they're replacing rookie league, instructs, extended spring training with a freshman year, you know, a Cape Cod League type experience, a sophomore year, maybe a Team USA experience. And all of that is, is way better, <laughs> I mean, in terms of their development. And I think we've recruited some players and families that really understand that. And, you know, it's, those are conversations we'll keep having. Did you get that sense from the family getting better as I go, you know, and I think it's an experience thing and a feel thing. And, and ultimately, you know, even today, I mean, it's great to have a good list of guys that committed to you. At the end of the day, really what I care about are the 35 guys in the locker room the first day of school next year. And that's what we have to do and do it in the context of roster limitations, scholarship limitations, and do it in a way where you can match up because the, the teams that we play, uh, the experience that they get at this level of competition, playing on TV all the time at a place like Arizona, that will really prepare them for pro baseball. And so the focus really goes to, okay, what 35 guys are going to be looking me in the eye the first day of school next year? What's your pitch to guys like that where they really have a chance to get drafted high and they want to go because they think they can fly through the minors and then you come in and say, you know, <laughs> Well, I think it, it is a couple things. I think, number one, there's not a lot of 18-year-olds that go out into the workforce immediately after high school. College is a natural progression just in terms of learning, growing at your own pace. Guys make mistakes, you know, at, at between 18 and 21 years old. And so if you come to a place like Arizona, you can work through some of that with them, and it allows them to be just more prepared as a person to be 
a professional athlete or be in the workforce. And some guys you have to look at and go, hey, like, hey, Joe, look at your dad. Has he ever been fired before? Because once you sign a pro contract, you are now working for that organization, and they can literally fire you at any time. And so the value of Arizona, playing in the Pac-12, college degree, life experience, I really think there's maybe 15 to 20 guys in the country that pro baseball makes sense for. And that might be a little bit of an aggressive answer. I just believe in this path. And we're not the only university that can provide them that, that path, but we're certainly one of them. And I think in the long run of their baseball career and their life, you know, Arizona's the choice. Well, it's tough to say um, because these guys haven't even been here yet for a fall, and even those guys haven't played a game yet. They haven't <laughs> taken their talent and made it usable skill for the University of Arizona to win a baseball game. Um, I'm encouraged by it. I think uh, it's very tough in college baseball to be an elite team every year because you're dealing with draft factors. And so what we really have tried to do is blend – the roster and complementing needs. Um, and I believe that there's some guys that are on that field right now that we're going to be talking about here in a couple months that, that we haven't talked about before because this is their first year. And that's my hope. Um, and then those guys will be a key foundation of the program for a couple years after that. And I think this group, particularly on the pitching side of it, blends with those guys really well. And, you know, hopefully that sets you up. There's a lot, of, a lot of things that go into that. These guys we just talked about, they have to keep getting better. The guys on the field right now, they have to keep getting better. And that's what we try to do is lay out this platform for that to take place. And then hopefully comparatively you look back and go, hey, those 2016 guys were solid. And then these guys backed it up. And uh, both groups have a long way to go for that. But I think it's exciting when you look at some of the talent thing. Now it's about turning it into something that we can use. This is a very pitching-heavy class, I assume that was on purpose based on projecting you were going to. Yeah, no question. And w th there's that element. And then, you know, and doing a lot of research when I got the job, and I remember of sitting down with Coach Lopez shortly after I, I got hired and, um, you know, picking his brain about roster needs moving forward, his perception of, what was in the cupboard, if you will, and, and he's like, hey, you need to go get some pitching. And we yeah. did that last year, even you know, getting Cody Deason and Kevin Ginkle for last year's team in the summertime. And then in 2016, a lot of the elite high school pitchers were taken, so it was a junior college heavy pitching deal. And then this year, we we're on a little more of a level playing field, so it allowed us to go get some guys that, you know, young pitchers, that you have a chance to keep in the program for three years, which is exciting. And then add an Avery Weems to that as a, you know, possibly a, only a one year guy here, um, you know, left handed. You, you got to take advantage of that when you get a chance. How often does the fact that you coach Chris Bryant come up in recruiting? Uh, a lot, which is great, you know, and uh, we won't shy away from that. And uh, again, I've said this before, when you look at, guys this age and maybe even a year behind them or guys that are on our field right now, I mean, they're talking about Chris Bryant maybe five years ago how everybody was talking about Albert Pujols or Alex Rodriguez or Derek Jeter. And so to have that connection and, and to have been a part of his development is, is awesome. And so it, uh, you know, they asked me about it and they asked me about it, we talk about it. <laughs> No, not usually, but uh, they might have a they might have a different spin on that. But you know, we'll we let the conversations evolve to that. You know, so we just sent him Damien's video from the other day. So. No, I was saying that. I mean, that, go ahead. Once once Brian comes in the conversation, that is your pitch, right? I mean, you talk about the importance of going this route. Yeah, and I've talked about that multiple times of it wasn't just him com committing to San Diego. It's not just about these guys signing a piece of paper yesterday. It's about their path to achieve their ultimate dream of becoming a major league player. And when you get to 
have an infield coach like Sergio Brown or a hitting coach like Mark Wanaka or a pitching coach like Dave Lawn, where their success is highly dependent on you, they're going to do everything they can to develop you, the player. And it's not just turn it over and recycle a bunch of guys here. For us to be successful, these guys need to be successful. And so when we get a chance to show them that that's why college players by number are typically more successful in professional baseball, you can show them why also. And you can really show them why with this staff when you talk about the players that across the board we've had, like Chris, that have come to college and have been really prepared for professional baseball. And you can see it at Arizona right now just in terms of the guys that went out uh, last year. I mean, Cody Raymer over 350, Zach Gibbons over 350, the Bobby Dahlbeck 380, Kevin Ginkle, great season. Um, that they're going to leave this program prepared to skyrocket through the minor leagues. And that is the only way you're ever getting to the big leagues. So now if you sign out of high school and don't uh, have that uh, experience, it's a lot tougher road. And so our job is to prepare them for that. And everything we do in terms of our development structure is geared around that. And if we do that well, our success usually takes care of itself. How would you describe your World Series watching experience? Oh, it was the best. You know, I, I'm a Giants fan, so I don't know if nobody gets mad at me for saying that. Um, you know, so that first series, it, it was great. You know, whoever won the Cubs Giants series, you know, I was I was good. But obviously, once the Cubs won that, I mean, I'm I'm so happy for him and man, what a what a life deal just to, to see that happen and, and to be a part of that team in that city. I read something the other day like that the World Series celebration was like the largest gathering of people on U.S. soil in like a billion years. And I mean, to, to have somebody that was a part of that and get to experience that, that was great. So yeah, watching it was a lot of fun. And the other element is our guys got to see really high level baseball throughout the postseason and, and we were able to apply some things in our teaching, which was great. Yeah, just text. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's that dude's on. He was on Jimmy Kimmel the other night, so he's got a little bit more to do than to text or call me back, which is uh, totally okay. What um, what about two thirds of the way through fall? Yeah, we have we have two weekends left. Uh, we have six inter squad games left: Friday, Saturday, Sunday this weekend, and then next weekend we'll have our Wild vs. Cat series. Um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of next weekend. And so actually we have about 10 days uh, left. Uh, that's progressing really well. Uh, I would encourage you know the public to come out next weekend to, to get a look at our team. It's a highly competitive environment that simulates a lot of what they see during the season. We have a big draft next Monday night or this coming Monday night, which is a lot of fun, good team building dynamic. And uh, we're just developing and, and progressing right now. And um, the good thing is we don't have to be ready to win a game today. I will say we're probably a little closer to that than we were a month ago when we started. And you're getting to see what guys need to do to continue to improve. And, and we'll keep focusing on that so that I don't know what the date is. I saw something like I think we're 100 days away from the season. And so um, we'll take all 100. Who are uh, one or two players, either <coughs> veterans or youngsters, who jumped out at you? Yeah, uh, from the veteran standpoint, a couple things are, are starting to move. I think Jared Oliva is moving from really talented athlete to really good baseball player. And we're really trying to close the gap on that. And we're doing some things adjustments wise that have taken notice uh, pretty quickly and have showed up in scrimmage and game competition, which I'm excited about. On the pitching side, uh, we have just started up J.C. Cloney and Cameron Ming based on their workload from last year. So they're, they're just getting going. They pitched an inning uh, last week for the first time. But on the pitching side, Rio Gomez has really emerged. He had a really good experience in the Cape Cod League last year and I think has um, you know, put himself um, in, in a better position uh, to uh, be a, a contributor and it's been exciting to watch. You stand back there and, and you watch the action on his pitches has been real positive. On the new player side, 
uh, it's exciting. You know, I, I think, you know, when you look at some of the production that we had last year, you know, with those, especially those top three guys in the lineup, everybody goes, hey, you're, you're replacing that. You don't replace each of them individually. They're special people. You do it by more guys contributing and more guys improving. And I think this team has a chance to have that dynamic. But new players, um, I'm very encouraged by Cameron Cannon. Uh, an infielder um, who's a, a very talented player, probably a little better than I thought, which is always good when it happens that way. Uh, Matt Frazier is another freshman that has shown some real explosiveness. Uh, Cal Stevenson, who played for us at Nevada, has played extremely well and, and will be a, a key component in, in our offense for sure. Um, so. And there's more. You know, Nick Quintana has played great defense at third base. He'll run into a ball, and you see the bat speed and the power and all of those types of things. And I'm hesitant to say anybody else, but there's more than that. But this is kind of off the top of my head right now. How are you playing to deal with the outside expectations now? Because last year the whole story was pick ninth in the Pac-12, and then you make the run, and now people are going to think you're, you guys are going to be good heading into this season. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, that's better than the alternative of people thinking that you stink. Um, and I don't know if we're good yet. We have not been, this group has not been tested. It has not been uh, through any type of deal where I could gauge and say, hey, this is a good team. There's some things that you're hopeful for if guys continue to uh, progress. But in terms of expectations, um, foundationally in the program, is we don't even use that word. The expectation for them is maximum effort in preparing really well. And so we're taking baby steps to this point and teaching them what that means. And then maximum effort towards executing the skill of improving on a daily basis. That is the only time we even use that word. Uh, but as far as the outside, um, you know, it's, it's great, but it doesn't win you or lose you a game. I think there's something that I think our team can learn from the Cubs, though, and Joe Madden talked about a lot of, you know, he talked about embracing the target. I still don't know if anybody's going to look at our particular team and go, hey, we want to kill those guys. Maybe they do. But whether they do or they don't, it's irrelevant because it always comes back to the play. And the team that plays the best is going to win on that particular day. So you shift all of your focus back into the play. Not at all, because they're such unique players that all have, have unique skills. And there was an old school theory actually out there that um, I don't know that I've ever been in position to really test it, but uh, Jerry Kendall used to talk about this, you know, recruiting shortstops. And then by doing that, you end up with a good defensive team, an athletic team. And maybe indirectly, we, we've done that. But when I look at, you know, the few guys that are here right now, they all bring something different to the table that is usable if they continue to improve. And then you look at, you know, Travis's dynamic is he's a switch hitter, which is a big deal. You know, anytime you can play a left-handed hitter at a place that typically doesn't have left-handed hitter, it's an advantage for your offense. I mean, Jacob is the best runner of that particular group. Cameron is a really balanced player. Shane Martinez is another guy I'm really excited about that I think can hit and move around the diamond. Nick brings a, a physicalness to our team and has an unbelievable throwing arm, which shortens the infield. So I'm excited about it. And I think they will be too. And I think it's a situation where all of them have a, a chance to really improve because of each other. And um, it's a great, great setup I have in my mind of, of how it's, it's going to progress and work out. But I think when you have athletic players that can do a lot of different things, it, it really helps you out. And you have to play defense on this field. You have no chance. And when you look at our success in the postseason last year, how well Lewis Boyd played shortstop. I mean, it's Ozzie Smith out there. And, and Cody Raymer's defense, you know, for the whole season, it became very evident that it has to be a point of emphasis, just in good baseball, but particularly here. Anything else from Coach? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay.